So I'm, I'm living for later, living for later. Good morning. Well, perhaps when you see this, it will not be morning, but it's morning for me. I'm just finishing up my quiet time, and I'm supposed to be speaking at church this Sunday. By the time you see this, it will have passed. However, I went back and I was just reviewing my notes, and I wanted to share something with you that I didn't share in the previous video. I know in the previous video, I focused on Matthew 3, 7 uh, through 10. But I want to do some backtracking really quickly and share with you some points from Matthew 3 verses 1 through 6. So let's just jump right into it. In those days, John the Baptist began preaching in the Judean wilderness. His message was, turn from your sins and turn to God because the kingdom of heaven is near. Isaiah had spoken of John when he said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare a pathway for the Lord's coming. Make a straight road for him. And actually, I'll stop right there at verse 3. This is interesting to me because John the Baptist, if we read um, in Luke 1, his birth was announced, right? His parents or his upcoming birth was announced his, by the angel Gabriel. His parents, Zechariah and Elizabeth, were old and Elizabeth was barren. And the scripture tells us that they both loved the Lord, um, that they kept his commandment. However, that however gets us all the time. They didn't have any children because obviously um, Elizabeth was bearing. Well, at this time, Zechariah was a priest and he was at the temple burning incense and offering up prayers to the Lord. And in the process of doing that, fulfilling his priestly duties, the angel Gabriel comes to visit him and he makes this grand announcement that, hey, greetings, Zechariah, this is in Luke chapter 1. Um, the Lord has heard your prayers and you're going to, you and your wife Elizabeth, you will have a son. And he goes on and he tells him in Luke, let me turn to it so that I can read it. In Luke chapter 1, it says, verse 11, Zechariah was in the sanctuary when an angel of the Lord appeared standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was overwhelmed with fear. I would be too. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah, for God has heard your prayer and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to name him John. You will have, now let me just pause here really quickly. Some of us, and I'll say this to moms, to, to, to those that don't have any children or who are expecting, um, the Lord is very much concerned about what we name our children, and this is not the first example of God giving, um, you know, the parents what they should name their child. And even if God doesn't give the name specifically, you have instances where uh, parents in the scriptures name their child and there is meaning behind the name. So if you are expecting or hope to be a mother someday, I would just encourage you to be um, intentional about what you name your child and, and to be prayerful about it. So anyway, if Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to name him John, you will have a great joy. You will have great joy and gladness and many will rejoice with you at his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or hard liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. So here it is that Zechariah is being given um, specific instructions concerning John. This is even before the, 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 the baby was conceived. Um, the angel Gabriel is like, listen, for the purpose that God has for this man, um, for this baby, um, that's going to grow up to be a man, that there are certain things that are off limits. And I think that we have to really be mindful that depending on our call and the purpose that God has for us, that there are certain things that's off limit, that's restricted to us. And it's not something that we should whine and moan and, oh, I can't do this, but instead rejoice knowing that you're being consecrated um, for your purpose. So don't whine about what's off limit to you, but rejoice in knowing that God, I am special enough that you have put up these restrictions because you want me to fully live out my purpose. 
all about perspective, all about perspective. And a note to parents, if you have children, um, you know, this is something that we have to be also be mindful of. Have you prayed and asked the Lord, what are things that's off limits to them uh, because it's connected to their purpose that you have for them? Okay, so let's keep on going. Verse 14. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice with you at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or hard liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. Okay, let's carry on. And he will persuade many Israelites to turn to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. Wow. The prophet of old. He will precede the coming of the Lord, preparing the people for his arrival. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will change disobedient minds to accept godly wisdom. Wow and double wow. So right here we see that Gabriel not only comes to say, hey, God is going to do a miracle, and even though you're old and your wife is barren, you and Elizabeth, you're going to have a child. So it wasn't just about the miracle. The miracle that they were going to have was assigned a purpose. Sometimes we get caught up in just receiving our miracle and we miss the point that there is a purpose for the miracle. God is not just giving us a miracle just so that we can go, ooh, and ah, it's, there's a purpose assigned to the miracle. So I even think about some of the things that I'm praying for um, and some of the miracles that I desire from the Lord. Am I just desiring those miracles just to have it? Or do I recognize that God, there's a purpose that you want to fulfill in giving me this miracle? Hope that makes sense. So um, here we see that John's purpose is listed out before he was even born. And I have six children and <laughs> for none of them, not one, did I have an angelic visitation telling me, Anika, you and Tyrone will conceive and your six children will, I didn't have none of that. But that, and to my knowledge, my husband didn't have any divine visitation either. However, that doesn't mean that when my children were being formed that God didn't have a purpose for them. And it's my job as a parent to seek the face of the Lord to see what their purpose was. Because again, when God gives life, it's for a purpose. And as parents, it's our job to try to help to cultivate and to encourage our children to pursue their God-given purpose. Now, when they get good and grown, I can't force them to fulfill their purpose. But for now, now, when they are under our care, it's our responsibility to encourage them in what God has called them to. And it's not just about rehearsing their purpose for them and to tell them why, what God has created them for. Uh, first of all, let me backtrack. I think as parents that we have to even spend time in prayer, seeking the face of the Lord to reveal the purpose of our children. And while we may not have the grand um picture all at once, God will give us some inclinations, right? And it's not just for our children, it's for us as well, that we have to spend that time seeking the face of the Lord to know when you were creating me, what was the purpose of that? Why God? You know, not just so that I could come and, you know, just look cute and do all this, but God, what was the purpose? It wasn't just so I could make a whole bunch of money. What was it that you had in mind when you created me, when you created my children? And again, to be intentional about um, pursuing it and encouraging them to do so. And I think one of the biggest ways to encourage our children in pursuing our purpose, and this is to the parents, is their purpose is for us to be examples in pursuing our purpose. Does that make sense? That can be contagious. There's something about being around people who are so excited about what God has called them to. And even if I'm not called to the same thing, the fact that I see them pursuing their purpose and they're excited about it, it gets me excited as well. And it's like, Lord, let me go home and write because I know you call me to write. Let me go home and do some more research so that I, I can be prepared when it's time for me to speak because I know that this is a part of my purpose. You get it? So be... Um, intentional about pursuing your own purpose and then let it have a trickle down effect on your children. So I just want um, to really just stop there and to just 
remind you of the truth that you're not just here, but that you are here on purpose, regardless of even some of the um, maybe mishaps that's happened in your life or maybe you've even taken some detours in your life and you know you knew what your purpose was but it wasn't glamorous or it didn't seem um, special enough and, and you've gotten to the point now where you're like God you know what I tried some other ways I tried pursuing what people told me would be beneficial for me but I see now that it doesn't give me fulfillment and I'm ready to get back on track the Lord is here to receive you back you know and, and to put you on that right track but there is nothing in life like fulfilling what God has called you to do so some action steps if you don't know your purpose pray and ask the Lord um, what his purpose is if you are a parent and you don't know the purpose of your child um, spend time in prayer and even include your children along with it and then three get busy pursuing it. Take little baby steps, just pursuing what God has placed in your heart. And um, just really quickly, a quick note to the parent. Don't find yourself running all over the place, running crazy, trying to put your children in every single activity possible. Um, be intentional about what they're involved in and just seek the face of the Lord. So yeah, that's it. All right. You be blessed.